Last year I wrote up a city generator in Python that was capable of outputting simple cities. More recently, I decided that I wanted to try to revisit this idea and explore how creating a city generator with Blender's geometry nodes could compare. I ended up creating two competing city generators alongside each other, one with Python and the other with geometry nodes. Both have different functionality, although, in contrast to the Python script or even the original Python script from last year, the geometry node setup has some very significant strengths. Before I can make an accurate comparison though, let's talk about what goes into making a city generator. So both methods are based on more or less the same idea. In either case, we start with a collection of base buildings and props. We then consider points on a grid of some size, and then, using position data from these points, a street map is generated along with a terrain map. These generated maps then determine where buildings are placed on the subsequently distorted terrain. Whenever we try to place a building, the street map is sampled for every neighboring point to our current position, and the value of the sampled neighbors can then determine the orientation and placement of buildings and props. This means that street lights can actually face the nearest street, and buildings will never be generated in unrealistic spots. Despite these similarities, under the hood these generators have some important differences. Let's take a look at the street and terrain generation maps first. These essentially tell the generator where not to place buildings. In both cases, we need two fields of values for the x and y axes that we can sample at arbitrary intervals for our street and terrain maps respectively. In our Python script, for every point we consider, we check the remainder after dividing its position by 2, and, if that's less than some threshold, set the street map value to 1. Next up, we want to break up that perfect grid pattern, so we sample a Voronoi texture and add that to the position information. We also then factor in the square of a Perlin noise map. This tells us where to extrude the terrain down for water placement and where not to place the buildings. Now let's take a look at our geometry node setup. Here the street map is determined by a brick texture node, the input vector of which is also offset by a Voronoi texture. Elevation is then determined by two factors. First, distance across the y-axis tells us where to place a coastal beach, and second, two noise textures, the first of which controls large-scale elevation differences, while the second just offsets the shoreline a bit. In both of these cases, Python and geometry nodes, I apply a cylindrical boolean intersection modifier to the resulting mesh. This effectively just trims the corners a bit to complement the distance-based building placement scheme. Now that we've gotten into building generation, an important part of this is how unique looking buildings are generated and then placed. This really just comes down to operations that are performed on our starting set of base buildings. The script looks for a predefined vertex group to offset along the z-axis. Offsetting a vertex group is a much better alternative to simply scaling the whole mesh because it allows for the preservation of scale-dependent details. The height value we're using is the result of a Voronoi map and a random value. After this, we offset the building's scale across the x and y axes using the sum of a random value and the building's height. Heading back to our node-based building generator, things are far simpler here. We're also using a Voronoi texture for building height, but I also chose to factor in the distance from the center so that the buildings become smaller further out. Because there are less mesh operations available to us in the geometry nodes, entire building objects are being scaled based on our calculated values. The major drawback of doing it this way is that it's not really possible to have smaller details on those buildings unless you like 20 meter tall doorways. So, by now we've placed and scaled our buildings. All that's left is to set their rotation, which is done rather differently between the two generators. The script gets its neighbor values, and calculates a direction that points toward any neighbor that is a street. That's all we need to calculate a rotation for each building. Back in the node city though, we're doing things a little differently. Here, we're offsetting building rotations by 45 degrees if a white noise texture at the building's coordinates is greater than 0.5. And with that, we just about wrap up the building and street processes, but we're still missing something, and that's windows. 
We're not modeling a graveyard here, so both city generators utilize procedural window materials. Starting with the script, we're using three separate materials and then mapping one at random to a given building's UV map. Now of course these building UVs also need to be mapped correctly in order to fit every potential building shape, otherwise we're going to get less than satisfactory results. The solution I came up with does just this. Iterating through UV vertices, we grab all that are above a certain Y position, these correspond with the top of the building, and then offset them by the building's procedural height value. In the script, this works just fine, but I decided to ditch the UV mapping thing altogether in the node setup. Instead, we have a single material that maps a procedural window texture to position data. This procedural window texture's width and height is then randomly set by per object values, and while this does yield less variation than the individually designed windows of the script, it's still a really easy workaround that neatly and efficiently avoids UV mapping. With all the building stuff behind us, now we can finally get into street level details. Because these cityscapes are so large, I decided to add these sparingly and then leave smaller stuff out for an art pass later on, so we're going to be working with large scale details like sidewalks and streetlights. Starting with the script, we're going to be taking a look at the value of our neighboring points. First, when sidewalks are placed, they're used in setting its size, so that it can be extended towards the street in order to give extra room around building perimeters. After this, we use the neighbor values to decide whether or not we're going to place a streetlight. Streetlights have a 50-50 chance of spawning on sidewalks bordering a street, and when they do, a direction is created that points toward the street, which defines the light's rotation. This way, lights always face the street. A very similar process to this happens in our geometry node setup too. Here we sample neighboring points, and then the value of these points also defines the placement and rotation of the streetlights. When rendering an EV, I use a simple gradient to fake lighting from these streetlights because it's not really feasible to do it for real unless we're using cycles. So going into this project, I didn't expect the geometry node setup to have so many advantages over the Python script. Overall, this really boils down to optimization and the instant visual feedback on both the node setup and whatever the generator outputs. That not only massively speeds up development time, but it also makes it far easier to animate properties, which makes for more dynamic renders. It would be quite the understatement to say that this would take a lot longer to do with a Python script. That said, Having access to all the mesh data and operators through Python is still a nice advantage. I was able to use this to more easily fine-tune the small details of our buildings in the Python script-generated city. While the two competing city generators have significant style and terrain differences, I designed the geometry node setup to mirror the original city generator's output so that I can directly compare the two. As you can see, results are pretty satisfactory. The geometry node setup is much more optimized and still generates cities that are comparable to, or even superior to the output of the old script. Thanks for watching, and if you like my content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.